Hi everyone, my name is Wade Carlson. I'm with Runecast Solutions and I wanted to discuss today about some of the new security f features and frameworks that we've been adding to our product. Um, we, we, we continue to hear from our customers and from you uh, about different security frameworks that uh, your business needs to comply against. So uh, we listen. We've been adding um, a few, and I'm going to cover two in particular that have been added over the last couple months, um, and that is CIS and NIST. Um, both of these frameworks are uh, included in the tool. There's no extra charge for them. Um, and, you know, ultimately, the, the, you know, you can do your analysis of your on-prem VMware as well as your AWS for each of them. So um, to complement the PCI DSS for AWS, um, we also have the CIS and NIST for AWS. Um, so, you know, really um, just other additional frameworks. Like I say, there's, there's always, um, it seems like there's always some businesses that uh, have an interest in certain security framework um, and need to comply against it, have, you know, uh, periodic audits, different things. And other, other people that I talk to don't necessarily need to comply against something. They don't have an audit based structure in their business, but they're, you know, working towards some level of industry standard compliance. Um, I, I hear NIST a lot, CIS, and these types of things. Um, so, you know, to complement, again, you know, we started with VMware guidelines. Um, we've added, you know, DSA stig PCI, HIPAA, uh, BSI is the German government um, security framework that uh, a lot of people use. Um, but just to complement these types of things, um, normally what I usually do is recommend anyone running VMware um, to have enabled the VMware hardening guidelines as well as, you know, CIS at a minimum. Um, you know, CIS Center for Internet Security, uh, pretty important if your environment and your systems are connected to the web. So um, that's at minimum. And then, you know, depending on your industry that you're in, and participating in, you may have direct interest in some of these others. If you're in healthcare, HIPAA, uh, payment card industry, if you're government and has some stringent guidelines, etc., um, DSA STIG and or NIST. But topic for today are the new additions, CIS, as an example. Um, each of these frameworks in here are have a tiny bit of a little uh, a different look and feel, if you will, not with how we really present the data, but the, within the, the controls and the frameworks themselves. Um, to give you an example of CIS that I'm highlighting here, CIS has different um, control standards for different versions of VMware or vSphere, as well as something different for AWS, okay? So some of these other frameworks aren't broken out like that and have different frameworks for different versions. Um, but that's something I wanted to point out for CIS. Uh, you know, another thing regarding CIS, we cover the entire um, framework. We don't do partial um, where we're looking at just a piece of the business and, and a, just a piece of functionality. Um, we're really looking at everything. So we, we try to, you know, in each of these frameworks include the entire framework. So Within CIS, some of the other unique features um, under the recommendation settings, you can see all different kinds of levels of recommendations, um, different levels themselves, level one, level two, depending on the stringency or the level of stringency that you need to comply against in your environment. Um, and CIS has scored yes or no. Um, and that's a little bit of the difference between some of the other standards. Um, you know, it, with CIS, if, if I look at, you know, one of these top ones that I'm, I'm failing, um, it's obviously going to show me, you know, a high level what it's really about, how many objects are affected by this, um, recommendations, um, it's, it's an installation for this one, it's a level one, and it's a scored type of uh, control. Um, and with without throughout our whole Runecast product, we're always going to show you within the details. We're going to have a details tab, findings tab, and a notes section. Um, if you're not familiar with this, I'll briefly go through these. Um, in the detail tabs, we're basically giving you you know a description of what this control is, um, rationale behind it, um, audit, um, you know checks and compliances, um, and, and certain. Um, commands that need to be um, submitted and created 
uh, remediation steps, what type of impact this can have to your environment, and different references. If there's references outside um, of the standard, as as an example, uh, this is VMware CIS, so there's there's a document that's out on VMware's website regarding vSphere 6.7 and you can have a direct link out and go review that information on VMware's website. Um, but what we also do is not only show you the, and give you opportunity to go out to VMware's website, we also provide a reference. And this reference is a direct link to the CIS Security Organization's website. So if you want to get their verbiage or take on this control, you can go out there and look through you know further details. If you have a security officer on site, you can, um, you know, get, have them go research this issue that you're seeing in the environment and so on and so forth. But ultimately in here, we're going to show the VMware sysadmin or the person that's going to go out and take action and remediate this. We're showing them the remediation steps, commands to run, the type of impact that you could expect in your environment or are experiencing in your environment because of this failing. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we also do a findings tab. So we're going to show you which objects in your environment are failing this control. Um, so you don't have to go out and check multiple different systems, your entire environment to see. Um, you do an analysis with Runecast and it shows you which objects you need to therefore go out and remediate and address. Um, so um, ultimately, you know, it, it's here for you. Um, with this also, um, as an example, in each section and each area of framework, you can kick out and generate reports. So if I wanted to generate a report from all these findings for CIS in my environment, I can do that. I can select the button to include all the affected objects. I can copy the data to a clipboard to my clipboard and paste it into my favorite application, or I can generate a CSV file um as a as a report or a pdf so all those all those are available and as always in in each of the sections as well we do provide an ignore button if for some reason that you um, are aware of this issue um, and for some reason you have a workaround in your environment or you you know f don't have a need or business requirement to pat you know to to have this configured this way you can create a filter by simply clicking the ignore button um, the, the notes section is free form field. You can put in whatever note you want in there. Um, say you're going to work on this and remediate in the future on a certain date. You can put that and add that note to that section if you wish. Um, NIST, very similar. Look and feel is going to be very, very similar. A um, couple of differences with NIST. Um, they have different priority levels, one through three with NIST. Um, under the controls, we have, I think there's like 48 different controls in here. Everything from access control to security controls um, ultimately, you know, boils down. And that will ultimately generate and show you in the results sections which controls are affected. So it breaks it out even further for you. Um, and then the results, you know, whether you're failing, it configured, or it's a manual. Um, type of result. Um, similar information, if you drop down, you'll have the details tab, link to the framework site, um, and then this is for AWS, this particular one I'm, I'm selecting, so it's going to kick you out to an AWS NIST um, control. We also provide you a link or a reference to the actual NIST organization's website if you want further uh, NIST uh, verbiage and, and uh, information regarding this control, okay, what it applies to, and the control number here. Um, on the right, we provide not only the NIST detail, which you can get from these links too, which we pull in, so you don't have to jump out to these websites if you don't want to. We pull them in here, and they list everything in here that's from the framework and from the NIST organization and giving you detail about what this is, what... Um, types of vulnerabilities are created by this um, control, et cetera, okay? So this is more for probably your security officers and people that are, are in line with uh, that type of uh, language, if you will. But we also provide a technical description, which is for the people that are going to be out remediating these, these issues in the environment. So your VMware sysadmin or whomever else is, is tasked with the uh, 
with that, um, you know, effort or job to go out and remediate these things. So um, the technical description is just that it, it gets down into the, uh, the, I call it meat and potatoes, if you will, of how you go out and remediate this and, and ultimately change this flag from a fail to a pass. Okay. So from red to green, uh, again, the ignore fit feature, if for some reason that you don't want to see this anymore and you don't need to worry about it, you can click ignore there. So those are just some of the new things that are that are out there in, included in within the Runecast product. These are fairly recent. NIST was about um, two months ago, or CIS, I'm sorry, was about two months ago. NIST was recently added uh, within the last couple of weeks, and they're both cover on-prem VMware and AWS. So um, further enhancing our support for AWS, that's that's been one of our 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 goals and. Um, we've been trying to be ambitious with uh, providing you with what you need to satisfy your security requirements in your business. Um, I'm, I'm doing some other videos. There's some other neat features that we've been recently adding to the product that we're really excited about. So keep an eye out and look for those videos as well. Um, Enterprise Console is one, support for vSphere 7. Um, and different things. Support for SAP HANA is also included. So those will be separate videos. Um, I'd like to try to keep these a little bit brief, but um, if you have any questions, you know, please let me know. And again, happy room casting and thank you for joining. Appreciate your time.